the harbor process. Harbor process produces ammonia on large scale or industrially. We produce ammonia on large scale because it has quite a number of uses. Before we look at these uses, let us have a look at history about this process. So harbor process is also called harbor Bosch process. Of course, this name is from the two inventors, that is Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch, both being German chemists. Now, by the year 1909, Haber had demonstrated the process of producing ammonia from air. Now, he was able to produce just 125 milliliters per hour of ammonia in a laboratory setup. As much as the process was very slow, the German chemical company by the name BASF got interested in the process and purchased the idea from Haber. Now the chemical company then assigned Karl Bosch, and that is why Bosch comes in in the name of the process. He was assigned the task of scaling up the Haber's process to industrial scale. And he was able to succeed just one year after, and that was in the year 1910. So, the chemical company was able to now produce ammonia on industrial scale in 1913. And you wouldn't believe this, by 1914, the company was now able to produce 20 tons of the same per day. Now, Haber was born in 1868 and died in 1934, while Bosch was born in 1874 and died in 1940. I believe this history has inspired our candidates. The works of these early chemists is just inspirational. Let us now proceed to now look at the uses of ammonia. Ammonia is put to quite a number of uses. We have been able to list down seven of those uses. So ammonia is majorly used in the manufacture of nitrogenous fertilizers. We also use ammonia in Ostwald process to manufacture nitric 5 acid. Of course, we also heard of ammonia in the Solvay process where we manufacture sodium carbonate. Ammonia too can be used as a refrigerant we also use it to soften hard water. We use ammonia to remove stains that have got grease. And finally, we use ammonia to manufacture hydrazine, which is a rocket fuel. With that, you are convinced that due to these many uses of ammonia, we actually need to produce it on large scale. Now, historically, we were able to see a situation where production of ammonia actually shot up in the year 1914 
which coincided with First World War. Those who do history, I hope you've gotten some hint. This substance was actually needed to manufacture explosives, of course, through nitric 5 acid during World War I. Now you know. Let us proceed now to the scheme for our process. And as we go through the scheme, we shall discuss the raw materials needed for the process, the conditions of temperature and pressure, and we shall also mention the catalyst used for the process. Here is our scheme, and without much ado, let us begin with mentioning the raw materials that are needed for the process. And these raw materials come in on the far left here. So we have the first one being nitrogen, of course gas. Nitrogen used in this process is obtained from the atmosphere using fractional distillation of air. Then number two, we have hydrogen gas. Again, coming in to our processing plant, this hydrogen is obtained from quite a number of sources. The main source of hydrogen is natural gas or crude oil. But we also obtain hydrogen through electrolysis of water. This is in places where cost of electricity is cheaper and electricity is reliable. So we can electrolyze water and as we electrolyze water, we all know we usually add sulfuric 6 acid in order to make water a better electrolyte. Now, these two raw materials are usually needed in the ratio 1 is to 3 by volume. One volume of nitrogen for three volumes of hydrogen. Let us now move on to conditions that are applied in this process. And when we talk about conditions, we mention pressure and we mention temperature. Allow me to begin with pressure. When it comes to pressure, several industries use different values depending on the cost that they intend to incur. So we are talking about pressure of between 200 to 500 atmospheres. But most of these processes, processing plants usually apply a pressure of 250 atmospheres. So that is what we shall have in our notes. Though, as I've explained, the pressures applied by different factories range between 200 and 500. So we shall go for 250, and that is what is usually used in most processing plants. Now, for temperature, the range again is between 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. But for this discussion, we shall go for 450 degrees Celsius as the conditions for our process. Remember, as we set these conditions, our aim is to maximize production of ammonia. Let's now review the catalyst used. So the catalyst used in the harbor process is usually iron. This iron, we, we divide it finely 
So it is finely divided and then we impregnate it with aluminium oxide. This aluminium oxide acts as the promoter for the catalyst. A promoter to a catalyst is simply a substance that increases the efficiency of the catalyst. Now, having gone through the raw materials, the conditions applied in harbor process and the catalyst, let's now take a journey through our flow diagram. So the two raw materials are getting in through this point. We purify and dry them. The purpose of doing this is to prevent poisoning of our catalyst eventually in the catalytic chamber. So, what do we remove in the purifier? Dryer obviously removes moisture in our mixture, but purifier would remove dust, purifier would remove carbon-4 oxide, purifier would remove sulfur-4 uh, oxide. We may also have gases like oxygen being removed and even argon at the purifier. Once we have purified and dried our mixture, we then compress to attain the pressure that we have just discussed here. Once our mixture is compressed, we take it to the heat exchanger where now we heat to the optimal temperature. Once we've obtained hot compressed mixture, then now we take it to the catalytic chamber where we have ion catalyst. In the catalytic chamber, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen, of course reversibly, and we are able to get ammonia. Of course, we shall balance with a 2 on ammonia and a 3 on a hydrogen. So you can see here, every volume of nitrogen needs 3 volumes of hydrogen to produce 2 volumes of ammonia. And that's why we said the raw materials here must be supplied in the ratio 1 is to 3 for nitrogen to hydrogen ratio. Now, this ammonia that is formed here is only 10%. That means the process is not very efficient. Most of the gases go unreacted. So, the reaction here is exothermic. It produces heat. So, temperatures are going to go beyond 500 degrees Celsius. So, what we do as usual is to take back the hot mixture of ammonia, just 10% of it, and the unreacted raw materials back to the heat exchanger. Here, we use them to preheat the incoming gases, and they get cooled in the process of preheating the incoming gases. Once that has been done, we feed this into the liquefier or the condenser. In the condenser, the ammonia, 10% of it, is liquefied. And then we store the liquid ammonia to storage tanks ready for the market. Now, if you don't liquefy ammonia, some Factories also pass it through a spray of water so that we are able to obtain ammonia solution. With that, we are through with our analysis of the harbor process in this short video. We want to thank you for your continued following and we take this opportunity to wish you all the best in your revision.